I also work on other aspects of our long-term talent strategy for the organization as a whole so that we are ensuring we have the best structure set up to find the future leaders of our organization. We found it's a bit easier to attract talent when what you're selling is kind of exciting and sexy. Um, so we've really also worked to convert that strong product into a strong employer brand. So we offer competitive base salary, OTE packages, uncapped commission plans, um, and it's a pretty greenfield market for them to tap into, especially in the U.S. It's not foolproof, uh, but it has certainly improved the odds that we're reaching, reaching offer stages with candidates and that they have all the information they need at that point to make a decision about joining us. We are here with Renee Tepper, talent acquisition partner for Ubic, a digital workplace helping companies empower their frontline teams to perform their best through streamlined communication and task management. Renee has been in the recruitment game for almost 10 years, and I'm looking forward to bringing on her perspective today. Renee, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me, Lisa. So could you just start by telling us a little bit more about Ubic, your role, and some of the experiences that led you up to that role? Yeah. So as you mentioned, I've been in talent acquisition for, I actually did the math. I think it's almost 11 years now, which makes me feel old. But um, I've started out in sales and was recruiting or selling, excuse me, recruiting services for a staffing agency, fell in love with the recruiting side, made the move, and I've been doing it now for, like I said, almost 11 years. Um, so yeah, so I've been with Ubic now for almost eight months. Um, and as you mentioned, Ubic is an all-in-one SaaS platform that provides a digital workplace for frontline workers. So when you think about a frontline worker, it's anyone who doesn't sit at a desk all day at their job. Um, so our platform really is designed to really empower those workers through our task management tools, our mobile learning, our communication platform, um, and really just make their day-to-day -day lives at work more efficient and make them more effective at their jobs. So we are a European-based company. Um, we were founded in Paris in 2014. We're now headquartered in London, um, and we are now expanding our presence across the pond to the U.S. We've been here for a little over three years now in the U.S., but um, that's where I come in. I am the talent acquisition partner for the United States and Canada, so I manage all of our hiring efforts in North America. And I work with our hiring managers to source, attract, and procure talent for primarily sales, marketing, and operation roles at all levels, um, as well as some technical and people and finance roles. But I also work on other aspects of our long-term talent strategy for the organization as a whole so that we are ensuring we have the best structure set up to find the future leaders of our organization. And now Ubic has grown rapidly. You, as you said, you guys are based in New York and in Paris and in London and with more than 200 employees. What types of recruiting strategies have you implemented to attract top talent? Yeah. So I think today, especially since I've joined Ubic, um, talent strategy for anyone in the field at the moment has really focused on um, finding talent in a very competitive and fast-paced market. So we haven't really seen a hiring frenzy like this since World War II. So we've really worked at making adjustments to our process to ensure we hire um, the best people for our roles, but quickly. And I think quick has been the main focus on our talent strategy. Quick, but you know, efficient because and effective because we want to hire the best people. So we've really made a concerted effort across all of our departments to shorten our hiring process. And I know that maybe seems kind of counterintuitive, but Really, if it's an entry level role, an executive hire, like we really understand that we can't be asking candidates to commit to processes that are five, six, seven steps. I mean, they'll be off the market before they've even made it halfway through our interview process. So we've really evaluated who are key stakeholders in these hiring decisions, um, what information we really need to glean from a candidate in the time that we have them in our process. Um, what we need to share with them so they understand what working at Ubic is going to be like and have we've really condensed that down into usually two to three steps. It's not foolproof, uh, but it has certainly improved the odds that we're reaching, reaching offer stages with candidates and that they have all the information they need at that point to make a decision about joining us. Um, and then it's also really important, I think, especially from a talent acquisition and HR perspective as the first one here in the U.S., 
talent strategy oftentimes incorporates right perks and benefits, right? That's a huge mm-hmm. part of what makes somebody decide to join a company. So as the first of my kind here in the US, I wanted to make sure that I reviewed our benefits and perks that we're offering candidates and make sure that they are as competitive as possible because they differ so much from like country to country, um, or not country to country, excuse me, from company to company. Sorry about that. Um, we wanted to ensure that we're offering what is most competitive. And so um, prior to me joining, our European team did a really good job kind of laying the foundation for benefits here in the US. So competitive healthcare, um, our PTO policy, 401k with a match, remote hybrid working options. Um, but we're also constantly evaluating to make sure that we're remaining competitive since that's a big part of, of hiring and attracting talent right now. Um, so yeah, so those are some of the things that we're really focusing on, but ultimately I think right now, and I think most other talent acquisition professionals would agree speed is like of the utmost importance right now. Yes. And that, that seems to be a, a thing that's being highlighted is how do you do speed, but also have quality within that. And, um, shortening the interview process seems to be something that companies are really trying to learn how to do because there's no point in keeping it super lengthy. And if you can really figure out how to nail that, help people understand your culture, get the right questions asked right off the bat. I think that is super effective way to combat some of the competition here. Exactly. Exactly. And then also trying to make sure and utilize panel interviews when we can, you know, because we, we have, there's more than just two or three decision makers as part of these processes, right? And there's more than two to three stakeholders. So how can we get the people that we want as part of the process into those two to three steps? So utilizing those panel interviews um, in most of our interview processes, I'm pretty sure I haven't hired anybody who hasn't gone through some kind of panel. So now, what are some of the hiring challenges your team faces um, being such a global company, and how do you go about resolving them? Yeah, so I will say I don't actually think being global has been as much of a detriment. If anything, it's actually been kind of a selling point, you know, and that our, our reach across multiple continents is appealing to a lot of candidates, whether it's entry level or executive, and and more at the leadership level actually, because that typically implies a global role, which can be um, a growth opportunity for somebody in their career. So again, it comes back to speed. I think the biggest challenge has been, has been speed and making sure that, um, we are staying on top of such a competitive market. So, you know, we're, we're really making sure that, um, we're staying competitive on salary trends and again, keeping those, those interviews, uh, interview processes short, um, and really just moving as quickly as possible. So I think we've also found too, that just in this market, something that has been beneficial and there's only so much you can do about it kind of depending on what your company is. But for Ubic in particular, our product is a strong product. Um, It's a good market fit. And so it's, we found it's a bit easier to attract talent when what you're selling is kind of exciting and sexy. Um, So we've really also worked to convert that strong product into a strong employer brand and really position Ubic as that really exciting and dynamic environment that a lot of candidates are looking for. And then also something that I've just worked with candidates on kind of just more as a personal guidance tool, I guess, when I'm working with candidates, especially those who are maybe a little earlier in their career, is that the state of the market is what it is right now. And it may seem like there are infinite opportunities. And at the moment, there are. But it isn't just a bidding war. um, And at some point, the market will settle. And if you're only joining a company for the highest salary and not really what culture or fit the company provides you, what the career opportunities are, progression, growth, things like that, you'll be left in a role where you're maybe, you know, not as happy and maybe at risk because you have such a high salary. Um, So, and again, not to say that money doesn't matter. It absolutely does. We're trying to be competitive as well, but career moves are still career moves and you want to be moving for more than just a paycheck. I think that's one of the best um, pieces of advice I've I've heard recently too, because I think for um, for the junior market, you know, you can be hungry right now for the salary, but I think a lot of the um, people that have been in workforce for quite a few years really are understanding the need for this meaning and purpose and um, appreciation of the culture within the workplace. So I think that's an amazing piece of advice. Now. You hire for sales and marketing and operations teams. What are commonalities that you notice among all the types of candidates um, for these teams in terms of what they expect or what they desire from the workplace and maybe other things that are more unique to their department? 
Sure. So I think what we see that all of our employees and prospective uh, candidates have in common when looking at Ubic and considering Ubic or coming to work for Ubic um, is the interest in working for a dynamic, high growth, fast paced organization. So I think to thrive in a scale up or startup environment, you need to love what comes with that. Um, so our employees are very driven. We're self starters. We enjoy high visibility and the speed that comes with working in a company like Ubic. So some people will love a larger organization, and there's certainly benefits to working at a larger company. Um, and there are cons to smaller companies because there's pros and cons to everything in life. Um, but I think we find that all of our employees across all of our departments really love the speed and growth potential that comes with a startup. But so I hire primarily sales, marketing, and operations, as we talked about. So on the sales side, our sales team is usually motivated motivated by the upside, right? So we offer competitive base salary, OTE packages, uncapped commission plans, um, and it's a pretty greenfield market for them to tap into, especially in the U.S. Um, so oftentimes, you know, in contrast to a larger organization, which is typically larger sales forces, smaller territories, um, you know, this that oftentimes leads to maybe less commission potential. That's the total opposite in a startup company. So the challenge for our sales teams is usually brand recognition um, and the ability to get a foot in the door with an unknown product or an unknown company. But the upside when you do make those inroads can be pretty significant. So th I think that's ultimately what motivates our sales team. Uh, on the marketing side, marketing professionals tend to be more motivated for working for a smaller company because of the opportunity to build a brand um, and really build out a new category in the market. So it's really an opportunity for them to become leaders in the space, um, which again, in contrast, maybe working for a larger organization, you're helping to support and maintain a brand that already exists and maybe helping to advance it in, in smaller ways, whereas smaller companies it, it, kind of the world is your oyster, if you will, in terms of branding. And then operations for us incorporates a lot of different functions. So that's like our implementation team, our customer success team, customer experience team, just to name a few. But I think what all of them have in common is that when you're coming to work for a company like Ubic, you're going to have a lot of opportunity to build structure, process, infrastructure, and really have a lot more say around how it's created and managed as opposed to maybe maintaining the status quo at a larger organization. So they're all motivated by something a little bit different, but I guess now that I've said it out loud, it's still the commonality of, of building versus maintaining. And there are challenges that come with that, but we are looking for people who are motivated and excited about that. And for the most part, that's, that's what you're going to find at, at startup companies in general. And you definitely find that here at Ubic. I think that's a really solid piece of advice and just a good mental picture for um, those people, list, the, those of us that are listening, um, to understand that everyone's motivation, although the base is the same, is going to be slightly different. And based on that, companies really need to be able to evaluate um, their departments and exactly what they're bringing um, for each unique department. So solid advice. What is your thought on an insight on companies trying to create a long-term plan to warm up their bench for future employees? Yeah. So I think there's two ways to look at that. There's looking at it from an internal perspective and an external hiring perspective. And there's, I think there's, there's different ways to go about it. But when you focus on the internal perspective of keeping your bench warm, if you will, especially in this market, it's employee retention. So it's really, really expensive to hire new talent. It is way more expensive to do that than retain existing talent. So I would recommend for employers to be really looking at opportunities to train and develop their talent, um, really focus on providing growth potential and growth opportunities, really showing your talent that you're invested in them and their careers and investing in them as future leaders of the organization. Um, if you're constantly losing talent or constantly dealing with turnover, you're behind the eight ball because inevitably we're all going to grow and add new talent to our organization. So you don't want to have to be adding additional headcount and consistently backfilling. So I think from an internal perspective, companies really need to focus on the retention piece. And then from an, an external perspective, from a new talent, um, you know, I think we all really understand that, especially like talent acquisition leaders, hiring managers, that employees are choosing their next role based on job fit and compensation we've talked about, but it's also equally as much about the company that they're joining. So they're looking at a company and their employer brands, how they present themselves to the market. So not only the problem that their product is you know, solving for or the gap that they're trying to fill, 
but what else is the company doing, right? Like what social causes are they involved in? What are they doing in terms of DNI? Um, how are they investing in their internal talent? Things like that. So I'd recommend that when companies are doing things outside of just what they're doing as a company and what they're doing from a product perspective, sharing what else they're doing from a, from a company brand perspective, that's going to help set themselves apart from competitors. And then I think as always, talent acquisition and HR professionals need to be on top of market and hiring trends. Organizations also need to be looking at their TA teams as more than just a support function. We're business partners and eyes and ears on the front lines of hiring. So lean on us for that information and guidance through what has proved to be a very challenging and frankly, ever-changing hiring landscape. It's been it's been fun the last eight months and uh, <laughs> constantly up and down, but we, we are the ones who are dealing with it day in and day out. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, we, we should be utilized in that way. One, one of the things I appreciate that you said in there was just this ability to really invest in the employees you currently have. And I think that also helps end up building a strong employee um, referral program within Absolutely. itself. Yeah. So, um, and then even highlighting the other initiatives that your company is a part of, because eventually people, I mean, the perks benefits are great, but people want to get excited about what you're partnering with. So um, I think that's another strong piece of advice. Last one for you, Renee, at Solvable, we're all about what drives purpose and meaning for people at work. So we'd love to know uh, what drives purpose and meaning for you. Oh, man. Well, I love I love the recruiting space and I never thought I would actually love what I do quite as much as I do. But I think that, you know, there's a lot of ups and downs. It's a roller coaster. At the end of the day, I'm dealing in the business of people. People have their own thoughts and their own, you know, opinions and initiatives, and that can have its challenges. But when I make an offer and I give somebody an opportunity to get their first job or advance in their career. I mean, there's, there's nothing that feels better than that when somebody is just thrilled to be accepting a job and coming to work at Ubic and, you know, my previous employers as well. It's, it's ultimately what has continued to drive me in the talent acquisition space. And I think for Ubic, um, the growth that I'm seeing with the company, the excitement of our expansion in the U S and just being able to be on the ground level of that is incredibly motivating and then ultimately at the, at the end of the day, like our product is solving for something that employees or excuse me, that our customers are really striving for, um, you know, and it's, it's solving a real issue. And I will say, I've talked a lot about retention. Uh, Ubic also in its own way is a retention tool for organizations, for their frontline employees, you know, so not only does it make their, you know, their day-to-day tasks in store more streamlined and more efficient, but you know, from a communications and an LMS or learning standpoint, it's an engagement tool and it is a way for employees to feel more engaged and more excited at work. And, you know, retention is of the utmost importance right now. And so to be selling something that helps that, you know, helps companies achieve that is, is motivating for me as well. Renee, I love that response because you touch on how it impacts the globe, how it impacts one-on-one and how it impacts you personally. So very much appreciate that answer. Renee, thank you so much for being on with us today. And thank you all for listening to Architects of Contemporary Hiring. Thanks so much, Lisa.